Everything in this video is my opinion and I'll show you in these tests how I came to the opinion. If you draw other conclusions from these or your own tests, please let me know why. The test setup. I've recorded various scenes in all resolutions and all quality settings and bit rates. A moving scene with lighter and darker areas, a static scene with a lighter character, but also a dark area, as well as a variant in which half the frame is taped and thus dark. In addition, a scene with a head and larger details, which is maybe somewhat representative of a more ordinary shot with a person. There's also a darker and a lighter one with more details and colors in the background. The respective variants with a darker background or half a taped image exists in particular to compare constant quality and constant bitrate. And finally, examples for color keying and colors in general, because while recording scenes for blue screen and green screen, I noticed that colors actually change a bit in different resolutions. These are a few features I'll pay particular attention to. Darker image areas, as they are particularly susceptible to compression artifacts. This is independent of this particular camera and can be observed in many cameras with compression. Image noise. Because the question is whether and how the different compressions and resolutions affect the grain. And the file size. Because the question I fundamentally ask myself is which combination has good image quality with the smallest possible file size. An important thing you should also keep in mind for your decision, the rolling shutter in 12K is worse than in 8K and 4K. In 12K we are at approximately 15 milliseconds, in uncropped 8K and 4K at about 8 milliseconds, so almost half. A few basic observations. With higher compression, the very first frame of a clip usually looks better than the following frames. Similar to a long up compression, where there are also frames that are sharper and contain more information than others. In B raw and higher compressions, however, only the first frame is more detailed, after which it potentially only becomes more pixelated. So if you compare settings with each other, don't do so with the first frame. Clips in constant bitrate compared to constant quality actually have a predictable size, with some exceptions. As you can see, a 12K clip 18 to 1, 10 seconds long, means 250 frames, always has the size of 1 point, around 1.6 gigabyte. Compression of 12 to 1 at around 2.5 gigs, 8 to 1 at around 3.7 gigs. And then there's the one thing that is mostly a bit off, that is 12K 5 to 1. I double, I triple checked all the numbers, but as you can see, they are not constant. If we take a look at the size and then at the scenes, we may come to the conclusion that 5 to 1 maybe is not 100% predictable. Take 1 is this test of moving trees and it has a fair amount of details. And as you can see, it is almost about 6 gigs. T2 has many details and a little bit of movement. And it's also around 6 gigs. Unfortunately for T3 there is no clip because the hard drive failed on me on that one. T4 is kind of a simpler image with a larger part that's dark. And T5 is the same but a little bit more complex and has more details and light. And as you can see T4 is smaller, it's about 4 gigs. And T5 is a little bit bigger at almost 5 gigs. T6 and T7 are blue screen and green screen and they are about the same size with around 4 gigs. So 12K 5 to 1 seems to be not 100% constant compression. With constant quality you can see that the numbers are kind of all over the place. Scenes with more movement, more details, more light in the scene tend to get bigger. In this graphic you can see T1 and T2 are the biggest in these tests. And size-wise, they are almost double the size as the lowest quality constant bitrate compression. On the other hand, more static scenes with uniform backgrounds like green screen, blue screen and stuff like that, they are smaller, even compared to the constant bitrate options. And if we take a special look at T2 and T3, the half-taped and dark image is almost half the size as the normal one. 
And in T4 and T5 we can see that the one with the lighter background and more colors in the background, this scene is also a little bit bigger, but not as much as the difference between T2 and T3. So the first important thing, constant quality compression. You sometimes lose and you sometimes win in terms of file size. Scenes with motion and many details are bigger in size, but in static scenes they are smaller. And don't worry, these are a lot of numbers for now, but after I've shown you some observations, it is of course about making connections and drawing conclusions from them. At this point I would like to briefly talk about grain, as everyone has different requirements and different taste. On one hand I'm a big fan of grain and especially of analog grain. On the other hand I need recordings with as little noise as possible for special effects and chroma key. Clips without grain can then of course be edited retrospectively with film simulations. The Ursa 12K has achieved something very interesting. Its noise goes in the direction of analog film. Colored noise with variable size and without a fixed pattern. And as always everything has advantages and disadvantages. For me the grain of the 4K material looks the best and most natural. In 8K and especially in 12K the grain gets a digital angularity. In 4K it looks soft and homogeneous. I also observed that the noise of the camera in 8K and in 12K in particular is comparatively difficult to clean up with noise reduction in post. Sure, if you scale down 12K to 4K the noise is less visible, but why not record in 4K then? Let's get to the quality and details. 4K 18 to 1 and you can clearly see the mushy, mushy pixels in the dark areas, but also in the more lighter areas. And even 12 to 1 it is still visible and a little bit still in 8 to 1. In 5 to 1 the digital nature sort of is gone in my opinion. 8 to 1 is on the edge. If you zoom in very closely I would say you can still see those pixel blocks. Interestingly 4K Q5, so that's the worst compression of constant quality, there are literally no pixel blocks. And quite honestly I'm not sure if Q3 and Q1 and Q0 get better. Maybe a little bit but not that much. If you say the darker areas look different that's because the light changed in this example in particular. Let's compare size wise this 4K Q5 is the same size, almost the same size as 4K 5 to 1. And yeah those look alike in terms of quality. 8K 18 to 1 it looks pixelated and not as good. 12 to 1 yeah better but still blocky pixel artifacts and you can here see the grain, the digital looking grain more obviously. 8 to 1 and it looks quite good. Maybe just as good as 5 to 1 I'm not quite sure. The light changed in this example and in Q3, Q1 and Q0 I'm not really sure about if the quality gets better or if it's down to the light changing. All in all the conclusions and the graphs for 8K are quite similar to 4K. 12K 18 to 1. On first glance it looks quite okay but on closer inspections there's pixelness going on definitely. 12 to 1 a little better but still a bit digital. In 8 to 1 the detail looks great but still the grain has that blocky digitalness. Is 5 to 1 better? I'm not sure. Still the grain thing. Q5 is almost the size just like before like 5 to 1 and it looks similar. 3 to 1 maybe is a little bit better but again maybe it's the light. Q1, Q0 I can't see difference in terms of detail. The grain is the problem here for me personally. So 12k is a little different. As you saw the quality looked quite good already at around 8 to 1. In order not to get bored I have the following observations or memorandums. Even with Q5 constant quality the image looks visually lossless in all cases I have tested so far. 
And if we look at the respective graphics, at the different resolutions, we can read very well from this with what image the constant bitrate looks optically lossless. So if you want to make sure that you don't have muddy digital pixel areas somewhere, you can safely record in Q5 and don't have to worry about having to set the appropriate compression that matches the image content. Constant bit rates only seem to offer the advantage of creating smaller files in 4K and 8K, both in 18 to 1. In 12K we already have the advantage that with Q5 the files are potentially smaller in the end than with 18 to 1. So Q5 seems to be the best compromise between optical quality and file size. I would like to take a quick look at how good clips look in different resolutions and compressions when they are the same size. In this case for example 4K 5 to 1, 12K 18 to 1 and 8K 8 to 1 which are all about 1.6 gigs in size. 12K has more details, but I would personally prefer 4K in terms of appearance. And even if we scale down 12K to 4K, I can see more colored noise on the left side. It's the same in this example in the upper half. 8K sits somewhere in between. A little less details, but also a little less colored image noise compared to 12K and here compared to 4K. Scenes that, as visible in the graphics, do not require much bitrate naturally benefit in this comparison, as there are no muddy surfaces from the beginning. Unfortunately, we still have to talk about colors now. Colors are slightly different in different resolutions. The resolutions can be divided into two categories. I call them color A and color B. 12K and cropped 6K have color A, and all others color B. So it looks like everything with a direct sensor readout is color A and everything that is pixel binning or something like that is color B. But I'm not sure about that one. Blue is especially affected. In this side-by-side -side comparison you can see an overview of the different colors and their differences. I can't say exactly which one of this is more accurate because blue also looks a little purple to the human eye with my lights, just like here with 8K and 4K. I don't own a measuring device, but with the help of a gap experiment we can take a look at the light spectrum and here you can even see through the camera that the light is not pure blue. So for blue screen the 12K recording with the aperture 600C and set to 100% blue has better results, although it's not exactly what I saw with my naked eyes. Anyway, I'm more of a friend of good looking colors compared to more accurate ones. So I don't want to condemn that there is a color change in the camera, you should just know about it. In connection with special effects and chroma keying, I'm very torn back and forth when it comes to this camera in general. The high resolution is an advantage when it comes to the detail, the image noise is unfortunately a disadvantage. In summary, Q5 is the best compromise between quality and size. But when you make content for YouTube or social media, it doesn't really matter what compression you record with, because in the end, the bitrate and compression from YouTube destroys all possible quality from before. The grain of the camera looks the softest in 4K, with higher resolutions it looks a little too sharp and digital and is sometimes difficult to remove with noise reduction. Depending on the resolution, the colors are slightly different. If there are new findings you'll find them in a possible second part or in the pinned comment below. If you made it this far, thank you very much for your attention. Taking and evaluating these longer and more detailed tests takes a lot of time and even though I'm aware that it is interesting for a small group of people, it is of course motivating if more people see it and take something with them for their own work.